nature of bhakti, that not is still followed. And that is why they are. What we take name, what are name? Oh, these are various kinds of names. Name is always pure, always pure. Namah Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vikra Purna Suddho Nitya Mukta Vinatva Namana A full of rush. Name has all the power that Krishna and Radhika have, Mahaprabhu have. More than that, more merciful, more powerful than himself Krishna. But due to so many various standards of devotees and non-devotees, pure name, rush name, then abhash name, aparad name, and so many. Especially the name has been divided into three. Shuddhanam, Namabhash, and Namapara. But there are so many more, 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 more stages. Also in Bhakti. In Bhakti also. Bhakti is only pure Bhakti, Rashmai. But according to the devotees, or the became of very, very, so many kind of In Chaitanya Chaitamrit also, it has been told, Cheto Darpana Marjanam Vijayate Sri Krishna Shankar. For what name? Not for all names. <coughs> if anyone has taken Hari name, and Diksha. <coughs> Not only internally he has taken Diksha. And is all kinds of unwanted things on earth have gone away. And the Divyagyan, transcendental relation with Krishna, has come. <coughs> and with a relation in the association of Shuddha Bhakti, if anyone is chanting, giving up all their <coughs> sense gratifications, lust and all, all these things. And if anyone will chant now, then these Seven or eight? Seven. Seven. Oh. Stages may come by chanting. Mm. We, cha we are chanting from oh, more than 30 years. How many? Some are more. Some are 20 years. Some are te 10 years. Five, five years. But even we are weak. Dhruva, Pralad, in the age of five, only in very short time. Dhruva in only six months. Narad even like that. That darshan of Krishna. All the stages came in them. Not all these, for some of. But why not? They are touching to us. We will discuss all these things. And we should try to follow. We have come to take the, all these things and realize all these things. And what process should be there that we can join to? There I told so many things. San Francisco, so many things. I never have told like that. There I told. To try. Remember you? What I told? Someone? 
you can turn. I don't remember also you said. <laughs> So, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very kindly and mercifully he is describing the seven excellent results which come from the chanting of the holy names. What I told, why they became weak, why they gone, went down, all that point. What Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had told. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We will discuss that so, in San Francisco, Srila Gurudev raised this question, why do devotees come weak and, and then they go down, they lose their strength and enthusiasm? Why? Because when a jiva is wandering in this world and by great fortune, he comes in contact with his spiritual master. <coughs> by the mercy of Krishna and by the mercy of the spiritual master, he receives Bhakti Lata Bij, the seed of the creeper of devotion. Now he's received the seed from his Gurudev. This is not the end, or this is the beginning. Now the desire came, Krishna Seva Vasana, the desire to serve Krishna. But that devotee should become like a gardener, planting the seed within his heart very carefully. He should give some water. Every day he would, should water. What is that water? Shavan and Kirtan. Hearing and chanting. Hearing and chanting. Oh, not hearing your own chanting. <laughs> Hear, Shravan means, what is the example? Prikshit Maharaj is hearing from Shukdev Goswami. Hearing from perfect and realized authorities. This is called hearing. So if this hearing does not go on, then there's no water for this seed, for this creeper to grow. Gradually, gradually, it will become dry. So it's very essential to hear. Even those devotees whose service tendency has sprouted and they're making some advancement. Some anartas have gone away. They've become somewhat detached from this world. And they're coming towards the stage of nishta even. So they're very detached and determined. Yet, they have not come in the stage of ruchi. They have, they have lost their taste for this world. It's a good thing. But they have not... They have lost. But they have controlled anyhow. Still there, but they not manifest in behavior. So... Like, because he is with devotees. So the stage of ruchi has not come yet. Taste. When a devotee comes in this stage, being outwardly renounced from the world, but internally not experiencing taste in Harinam, in Sadhu Sangha, in Harikatha. This is a very, very critical time. That I told you. Very critical. In this critical time, the most essential thing is to what come... I told? <coughs> what I told? Shalagram. What is critical? Critical means that it's a position that is somewhat dangerous. It's very easy to fall back down again. If Why? He's not careful. Um, because the sadhak at this point, he doesn't have taste yet. He doesn't have ruchi. And he has left. And yet he has left all worldly things. Oh, forcibly he has left all sense gratifications, lust and everything. <laughs> but all are there. Because no taste in Harikata. So this or stays is very, very critical. If you are in that time, not giving up high class of association, always serving Guru <coughs> then you will be set. 
otherwise not. So Srila Gurudev described how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his teaching to Rupa Goswami, he said that one must make a fence around the creeper. This fence will protect the creeper from any animals coming and eating the creeper or any mad elephants coming and uprooting the creeper. What is this? This means offenses. So don't make offense, make a fence. <laughs> what is that fence? That fence is Sadhu Sangha, the association of very high class Vaishnavas. If there's a plant which is growing, if it becomes very, very big and strong, then its roots go deep into the earth. Such a, a plant, if it does not rain for some time, no harm, because that plant is taking the water from the earth. And now this tree is so big, even a very big elephant comes, the elephant cannot do anything, even to that tree. So in the same way, those Vaishnavas, who've become very, very advanced, and they're taking water from the earth, that means... What I told you. Give what you told. Shri has described how uh, the stage when the sadak is given up externally by force of uh, material attachments and that has not attained the stage of Uchi where he has developed taste and the holy name Haikata Sadhu Sangha very delicate situation, very critical stage. At that stage, he has explained, one has to build a fence around the creeper of devotional service, the Bhakti Lata, <coughs> to uh, end by regularly hearing from high-class Vaishnava and serving Gurudev, um, he, this Bhakti Lata can develop very deep roots where the creeper can take water from deep down in the earth, and even when the creeper uh, grows very strong and becomes a strong tree, then even an elephant could not destroy it. Yes, there is more. Oh. Two points. I gave an example of tree. If tree is taken, oh, you should stand. And taking water from earth, and it has become so right, that even elephant cannot do. They cannot dare to come. Oh, then he can save others. Janma Shartha Kari What is the meaning? In this verse it is stated, first you should make your life successful become perfectly situated on the platform of pure Krishna consciousness, then you are able to help others, otherwise not. Why? Oh, you are thinking that I am, I have become Haridas Thakur. <laughs> no harm. A beautiful, very beautiful teenagers, all ladies are coming. I must help them because I see so much uh, humbleness in them and very sweet. So my heart wants to help them, and when he helps them, what becomes? You know you all. That's right. <laughs> hmm? So I think that very dangerous, critical this thing. First, be a, like a big tree taking water from earth yourself, like Rup Sanatan, like Bhakti Thakur, like others and then try to save others. And if you are not in that position and you jump to save in your friend who was drowning in the, drowning in the ocean and you jumped, you don't know how to swim and you jump and what became? Oh, you are caught by that friend and both. <laughs> don't do like. But we are doing the thing knowingly doing. So we should try to be like that. 
and that is why you have all been called here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should be very, 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 very careful for this. First thing is, and what other points? So then, Srila Gurudev, he went on to explain that in our spiritual life, the chanting of Harinam is very important. But why, after chanting for so many years, are we, do many devotees experience that they're not making progress? They seem to be in the same stage after many years. Or even more went down, going down. What is the cause of this? <coughs> Actually, yes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given the process of chanting Harinam. But we have to follow the process as it is prescribed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gurudev mentioned this morning all oh, three types of name Nama Parad, Nama Bas, and Shuddha Nam. This chanting must be performed in such a process that we can approach the platform of chanting Shuddha Nam. This is called Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Not only Kirtan, Sankirtan, Sarvato Bhavain Kirtan. When kirtan is performed, giving up all nama parats, when it is performed, or oh, giving up, free from anatta, and when it is performed with some bandhagyan, having a clear conception of jiva tattva, maya tattva, bhagavat tattva, sadhan tattva, satya tattva, and our relation with Krishna, when sankirtan is performed with relation, and also in the association of Vaishnavas who themselves are performing Shuddha Nam Sankirtan or then it can be called Shri Krishna Sankirtanam Transcendental Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam Transcendental Chanting If anyone will come into this process then surely there must be some result from their chanting and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has uh, explained those results seven results of chanting in his very first verse of Sri Shikshastakam. We will do it. So, um, we should make our heart open. Try to follow all the teachings. First, we should try to know the teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami. He has collected all these things and he has briefly told all the process of taking chanting them, especially in Kaliju, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Mai Vakhi Only one Hari Nam. But if you are thinking that now we are expert in chanting, reading books in our homes, some rounds doing. Oh, you should try to come in high class of associations. Time to time, they can save you. Maybe supreme, it is okay. But if it is in the guidance of high class of devotees, then Otherwise not. If you are chanting name in the association of Mayavadi, Dharma Dhaji and like uh, lusty persons, oh, this will not save you. Never. After some time it will go. So sometimes, oh, try to take some energy from high class of devotees. And that is why, knowing all these things, I am coming in this old days of 81. Not for me. Never. Only to carry order, carry the order of my Guru works, especially my Gurudev and Srila Bhakti Vedanta. So I have come. Otherwise, no business at all. And also I am inspiring my devotees also to preach like this. Oh. Helping me in my 
making books, publishing books, and distributing them. I have engaged all, almost all. Anyhow, I want to engage all, top to bottom, all in this. So Swamiji was very tricky. Srila Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. Very tricky, very tricky. <laughs> Even lusty and bad persons, <laughs> he engaged in this. Anyhow, he has done, he has made for them Sukriti, and that is why all are now coming. Though they are grihas now, but even all have some seed of bhakti lata in them. Oh. For some time it was like drawing, and now they want water, so I must help them. That is why I am coming, going here, there, not taking rest in Vrindavan. I wanted, but I thought, oh, it is very essential. So make casuals for seven days, oh, so many qualified devotees are here, they may give classes and for Kirtan, Aarti, Tursi, Parikrama from morning to again morning. We should make. And then I will come. It may be for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, any time in morning. If not, I cannot. But in evening class I must come for two hours. Yeah. And, and you should try to come. You should try to come. What you want? So you can collect. Also, I request you. Oh, for my books. And magazine also. They should be distributed very soon. You should try all. As I have appealed so many times, at least ten, ten, five, five. Oh, you should take books and distribute. I know at the time of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, oh, very teenage girls, boys, in the streets, in Airport. airports, and also in what port more? <laughs> Seaport also. <laughs> they used to go to hotels. They used to go. No, no SM, nothing. <laughs> Hospitals here, there is schools and colleges. They need. Parks also. So. I think that my devotees should be in such a niche and they should help me in world preaching. Um, my wife and I just went into the bank on the way here uh, yesterday and um, we just gave out a couple books and this person dropped everything and came here. <laughs> Yes, oh, <laughs> you should do. It will help you in developing Krishna consciousness. After me, or oh, any class will be done here. Who is giving? So you should make arrangements. There are so many. So engage all. Two, three, four class may be done. Oh. And when I will come, oh, I will tell anyone to speak and my shall also. Because I continuously, more than 40 minutes, I can have some troubles. Go, Prima. Hari Oh, my God.
my sheikh ji sir that ji how are you i'm doing very very good ah you so good too and helping in san diego what ah we have for my fun ha okay my and you are helping our devotees Even Los Angeles Temple, oh, yeah, Iskand Temple, helping all the devotees. Very, good, very good. Okay, I caught him. Uh, very good. Yeah. You're going to go. I was. I was lost. In, I was missing you. Lacking. Missing. Missing. My friend. He's shy. He's shy. But yeah. why he was sleeping? Perhaps he was sleeping. Thank you. I have something gift for you. So sweet. Ah. Not, not for your brother, not for you. Yeah. <laughs> Now you should all return. Hey, I got a photo of the Arun Mohan Swami for you. Can you show me the photo? Touch. You in touch with me, Dana? Huh? You in touch? The day. ಶಿರಾಧೆ <laughs> What's happening? Excuse me. It's some bogan. Ah, sure. Bringing the presents for Gordon. Jenna, get back here. I'm leaving it, sir. ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯಜಂತಮೇತಮೇತೃತ್ಯಂ ಜೀವಾಧೇತಿ First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my Paramaraja to my Guru Pada Padma, Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pada Astotara Sita Sri Shima, Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my Paramaraja to my Guru Pada Padma, Om Vishnu Pada Astotara Sita Sri Shima, Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. to all of our guru varga and all the assembled devotees okay i can't use the excuse that i'm not prepared to speak not knowing ahead of time because guru dev told me you should always be prepared so i will share with you some of the uh classes some brief excerpts of the various classes that Srila Gurudev gave in the previous cities. 
He spent a few days in Salt Spring Island, Canada. And there he held two classes which you could almost call two istgosties. Because, as you know, everywhere he goes, there's always devotees seeing him for the first time. And they've made many, many sacrifices to reach the point of being able to see him and seriously take his shelter. And a large part of that sacrifice is overcoming the obstacles naturally not created by anyone else because our obstacles in bhakti can only be caused according to our acharyas by our own past sins and offenses. They take the form of obstacles. But sometimes those obstacles appear in the form of false propaganda regarding Srila Gurudev. And devotees always bring up these doubts, little doubts that they have, or how do they preach to others with doubts. And this also happened at a darshan uh, before class of the 22nd. So on this 22nd, both in the morning and in the evening, he spent the entire two classes responding to these doubts. So, Rajanath would read off the questions and Srila Gurudev would respond. One is, you are too high for us. It's not, we're not ready for this now. Your mood is different from our Srila Prabhupada and it's too high. So, how did he respond? He said, for the beginner, second class is too high. Or for one in kindergarten, first grade is too high. But you have to be like plant worms. The plant worm inches its way from one leaf or one twig to another. And Srila Prabhupada also used to give this analogy that the worm is taking its foot or sometimes it's walking with its head and its back and it takes a step onto the next twig or the next leaf and when that foot forward is secure then it takes its foot from off the previous leaf and puts it onto the next leaf. In this way he has to gradually walk step by step. Then he said, this is the way of reaching the roof. Go up and up, step by step. If you think, my Guru Maharaj never told me to take the next step. He told me, stay where you are. This is illusion. There is a son and a father. The father made a well for the son for drinking. And then after so many years, the father passed away and more years gradually passed. And gradually, this well became contaminated, stagnant, dirty, and so many worms began to live in the well. It just so happened that the Ganges River was very nearby. And some of his elders, wise advisors, told him, be very careful, don't drink water from this well. The Ganges is right near here. Take water from the Ganges. And he said, no, my father made this well, and this is the only well that I'm going to take water from. I have no interest in the Ganges. What is this, Gurudev said? It is nonsense. What would the father have actually wanted? He would want, why did he make the well? So that the son would have pure water. Wherever there's pure water, the father would want the son to go. So as Srila Gurudev was explaining this morning, with reference to his San Francisco class, 
serving so nicely externally, but not understanding the mood of our Gurudev, <clears throat> and therefore not taking higher shelter of that tree whose roots are deep in the earth and doesn't require water from anywhere because it's getting it from the earth, that is, seva sadaka rupena, siddha rupena chatrahi, that is, the pure devotee, in his sadaka form, he's following the previous acharyas in their sadaka activities, like the six goswamis. Internally, in his siddha rup, his spiritual form, fully perfected spiritual form, He's absorbed in his 24-hour service in Goloka Vrindavan, thinking of the pastimes of Krishna. And when he was in Eugene a few days ago, Srila Gurudev gave very, very specific, detailed um, instances or histories that that devotee is meditating on, how he's meditating. He's in Braj, he's following that very famous verse in Upadesha Amrit. Tanama rupa charitari sukurtamano smrit yoga mena rasanama nasina yoga prajeta danuragi jananagami kalam mayeda kila ityupadesha saram that the essence of all advice is to very carefully, very nicely, chant the holy name, fame, form, and qualities <coughs> of Krishna 24 hours a day, following in the footsteps of Tadanu Ragi Jana Anugami, those who are associates of the Lord in Braj, like Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, and those who are followers of his associates, that is the same people, but in their sadhaka forms, as Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Sarup Damodar, and so on. When a Sripad Aranya Maharaj was reading this verse, Srila Prabhupada wrote in the translation, nicely chanting, Sukirtananam, Gurudev said, what does nice mean? Nice means, according to the name of Krishna, I'm thinking of that pastime. As I'm chanting, whenever the name comes, I'm thinking of that pastime. If I'm chanting Govinda Damodara Madhaveti, then I'm thinking Damodar, Damodar Lila, Damodar Bandhan Lila, not only with Madhi Yasoda, but also with Srimati Radhika, all those Bandhan Leelas, how Radhika binds that even more complete Damodar than that Damodar who's with Mother Yasoda. So Srila Gurudev told the whole Leela, as he told here in Braj last year, two years ago, over a series of classes, how Krishna was at Prem Sarovara with Radhika and the gopis and the bee Madhusudana came and Radhika fainted, going on to that making Krishna want to leave Braj and then he was having his uh, sacred thread ceremony and his priest said, now first take alms from your mother and father and Krishna, although Yasoda, not Yasoda, Vasudeva and Devaki were standing right there. He said, Mother, Mother, where is my mother, Yasoda? She promised that when you take your mantras, I'm going to fill your jewelry with diamonds and rubies. Where is my mother? And Krishna fainted, crying for Mother Yasoda. Then how he went to Ujjain and uh, studied under Sandi Panimoni. Then how he sent Uddhava to Braj. Then how Uddhava went to Braj. And before that, how Krishna was walking Uddhav to the chariot, that chariot that Kamsa used to ride in, that chariot that Akrura came in. Krishna was walking Uddhava to the chariot, but weeping so much 
telling him, and you'll see this, and then go to this person in Braj, and then you'll see that, that place of pastime of mine. And he was just weeping so much that Uddhava could not tolerate it, could not tolerate Krishna's suffering. So he immediately jumped on the chariot, got the chariot driver to whip the horses quickly and ran off, and Krishna was standing there like a statue, almost could not stand, and weeping, and he had to be taken back to his palace. Then what happened when Uddhava arrived in Braj? His experience with Nanda Baba, and when Nanda Baba was weeping and weeping, asking about his son, Uddhava didn't know whether to say, keep crying or stop crying, because the Shastras say the perfection of life is to cry for Krishna. So he was in confusion. Finally he said, you're so fortunate that you're crying. Nanda Baba said, I see that your milky, t milky teeth <laughs> have not uh, grown in yet. Your baby fat is still there. I thought you were intelligent, but now I see that you're not intelligent. You're saying that I'm fortunate? you don't realize that I'm the most unfortunate person because I don't believe that Krishna is God. But you're saying that he is, that I'm fortunate that I had God as my son. But if he was God, that would make it even worse. Because I had God in my house and he was so dissatisfied with me that he left. And then Srila Gurudev went on to explain how Uddhava next went to see the gopis and he was giving some of Brahmargit, Radharani's discussion with the bumblebee. So in this way the devotee is meditating internally on the pastimes of Krishna and his own service and praying that to those who can give him that service to please enter me in that my eternal service. So this is a devotee who is a big tree whose roots are in the earth and doesn't require water from anywhere else. So because we don't have that sangha and we're not hearing how Srila Prabhupada would have wanted us to continue or the father no longer wants the son to take water from that same well. Therefore, Prabhupada's followers and followers of the followers have become very weak. Then he said, just like in the beginning, Prabhupada gave you the Nishringa mantras to chant at the time of Mangal Artik. Because you were so afraid of demons and so afraid of bodily inconveniences at the time, and our only conception of Krishna consciousness is that I will be happy Krishna will take care of me and I should serve him in this world. So, therefore, he gave you the Nishringa mantras at that time. Just like in grade school, you get all the subjects. Then when you have to major, you major and you don't take so many subjects. So in the beginning, he gave you the Nishringa mantras in the morning, but what do we want when we pray to Lord Nishringadev? O oh Lord Nishringadev, please save me. There are so many demons. Please save me from the demons. And gradually, those of you who lived in his temples know that after Prabhupada's departure, what we were originally praying for with Lord Nishringadev, a general save me, gradually became now our temples our, are attacked and people are suing us and they want to take away our temples. Please save our temples. And it became changed from one thing to another. In the beginning, Srila Prabhupada had, as you know, a so-called heart attack. So-called because the pure devotee is never touched by the material energy. But as stated in the ninth chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, he may appear to have some disease just to increase the loving service of his disciples in his Nara Lila. So Srila Prabhupada had a heart attack just a couple of months 
after I met him in 1966, and at that time he taught us the Nishringa mantras. I wrote it down word for word. And then there were only three temples at that time, and so he told me to call up the temples. We were in New York, then there was San Francisco and Montreal. So I had to call them up and tell them the Nishringa mantras and to pray to Lord Nishringa Dave that uh, our spiritual master has not completed his work yet in this world. So if you desire, please give him the opportunity to help us by finishing his mission here. So he was introducing us to Lord Nishringa Dave. But then Gurudev said, now how should you pray? Who are the demons that you want to be saved from? Lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion, and envy. If there's some need, when there's some need. Just like in 1966, Srila Gurudev stayed at Sridam Saka Prabhu's house. He's here now. And this was his first meeting with Srila Gurudev. And in his house, Gurudev said, Why are you going to astrologers? They can't help you. They will take away your bhakti because you'll depend on them instead of Krishna. Unless the astrologer is a bhakta, then he'll encourage you in your bhakti. He said, If there's any danger, what to do? Namaste Narasringaya. So in certain circumstances, we pray, pray to Nishringa. And Srila Prabhupada was giving us in our kindergarten grade school everything, all subjects. But now, because another of the doubts, one is that you're too high, you're giving us what Prabhupada didn't want us to have. And now the second one was, your Mangal Artik is different from our Prabhupada's. So yours is a deviation and we can't follow yours. So then he's going on to the Mangalartik. Mangalartik means that you're doing archan and arti of Radha Krishna during their Nishanta Lila. What is the use of praying to Nishringadev at that time? Can he give you Braj Bhakti? Or more so, can he give you that type of Braj Bhakti that you desire to be the maidservant of Radhika? We honor all incarnations of the Lord and worship them. But who do we pray to for what we want? Those who can give it. We pray to Yoga Maya, we pray to Giriraj Govardhan, we pray to Vrinda, we pray to Lalita, Vishaka, and particularly Rupa Manjari and Rati Manjari. What is the use, he said, of praying to Lord Nishringadev at that time? Neither. Here we are worshipping them in Braj. They're now in the Nakunjas. Is Nishringadev there? We'd have to leave there to worship Lord Nishringadev. But there they are. But there they won't be if we worship Lord Nishringadev at that time. Although it appears that we have so many Takurjis on the altar and they're all there, Radha and Krishna are there, Gornatai is there, Jagannath Baladeva and Subhadra are there, Lord Nishringa Dev is there, all the deities are there. But what happens? Radha and Krishna go away. They won't be there. Even if Gornatai is there, of course they can be in a different prakost, a different section, as Srila Prabhupada taught us. But if Gornatai and Radha and Krishna are on the same altar, then uh, Radha and Krishna will leave. If Radha and Krishna are secretly meeting in Nandagam, and all of a sudden they see Mother Yasoda, she knows everything that's going on. But because mothers know everything that's going on, you, you who are mothers know. But they will pretend that they don't know. Just like when Krishna comes home after cow herding, and Srila Gurudev actually right in uh, Nirgun Prabhu's house on the first year, he was sitting by their family deities, 
and were training uh, the devotees how to do arti. Perhaps he saw that we were fanning too long or doing the different paraphernalia too long. He said, Krishna will say to you, I'm hungry. Why do you keep fanning me for so long? I came home and I'm hungry. And Mother Yasoda will offer a lamp and she'll see. This is to study. What is the lamp? Not to offer Krishna warmth. It's to study. What does Krishna have on his face? He has all these scratches on his face. Oh, those boys are so naughty. I told them not to take Krishna into the running through the bushes with all those thorny twigs. But she knows why he actually has the scratches. But she's not saying anything. So, if Radha and Krishna are secretly meeting, and all of a sudden they see Mother Yasoda, what will they do? Without a second thought, go in two different directions. Run in two different directions. So, Gurudev said, in your country, in your western countries, you have no conception of any etiquette, of any cultural etiquette. In Vedic culture, the elder brother of the husband is treated like a father to the wife. She will honor him as a father, practically as a father, and he will bless her as a daughter. And she will always keep her head covered before him. She won't look at him, and he'll bless her from afar. He said, in your country, the, the wife of the elder brother can be naked in front of the elder brother, no harm. They can dance and play together. But this is totally against Rasa Shastra, totally against the Vedic culture. So, Gaur Nitai, Gaur is Mahaprabhu. He's no other than Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahiyanya. He's no different from Radha and Krishna. So surely he can be there. But if Nityananda is there, Nityananda is Baladev, the elder brother of Krishna. So Radhika won't be there. And if they're together, they'll both leave. So we may think, oh, I'm worshipping Radha and Krishna and Jagannath on the same altar and Gonitai and Lord Nishringadev, but they won't be there. They'll have left. A question came up then. Even if they're on separate altars, there's one pujari. That he, and the kirtan is to Radha and Krishna when he's offering to Gornitai. What should be his meditation at that time? That's a good question for Gurudev. <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. Or if there's three pujaris, each on a different altar. And they're singing to Radha and Krishna. Krishna or conversely, you are to if that happens to be the circumstance, then we can suppose that the answer is, answer is the same as if someone only has Gornitai deities and he's, um, he needs to offer the Boga to Radha and Krishna and perform Arati to Radha and Krishna. Uh, he can see, because I had to ask Gurudev this when I was painting Gornatai, how to see Chaitanya and Nityananda. He said, you can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Radha and Krishna, and you can see Lord Nityananda as Akanda Guru Tattva. Means he's a combination not combination, but he is all gurus in one. And all the gurus are manifestations of him. So who are the gurus? All the gurus in the line of Rupa Goswami. So if, if Nityananda is a Kanda Guru Tattva, then we can see him as Rupa Goswami is there, Raghunath Das Goswami is there, Srila Viswanath Chakrabadi Thakur is there. Everybody is there. Also, he can be seen for those who have the Adhikari as Anangamandri. 
Nityananda will never be near Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is also explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita. If uh, Gore, Gorsundar is deeply absorbed in the mood of Radhika, then Lord Nityananda Prabhu will offer his Dandavad Pranams from afar. But just as Baladev will never be there when Radha and Krishna are having his pastimes, but he always wants to be there. He is the Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead, and he wants to serve in all of Krishna's Leela. So, he's, he's Baladev, he's Ananta, he becomes all the Vishnu incarnations, and as Baladev, he assists in all of Krishna's personal pastimes in Braj, in all the Rasas, Vatsalyaras, Dasiras, Sakyaras, but in Madhurya Ras he cannot enter. Fortunately, he's Dameshwara. Means he is the Dham itself. He manifests all Dhams. Baladev is the personality of Sandini Shakti, the potency of eternal existence, maintenance, and nourishment. All these three come under the category of Sandini. I'm maintained, I'm nourished, and I exist. It's all one. So Baladev takes the position of the land. And as the land, as Gurudev said, every atom of Braj is full Baladev. Just as in every atom of this world is full Paramatma. So as the land, no matter where Radha and Krishna are, Baladev is there and he can witness and serve the pastimes. We hear though that Govardhan, he's land of Braj, but he is a manifestation and a fraction of Srimati Radhika's heart. So how could he be Baladev? Vedanti tattva vidas tattvam yajjana madvayam brahmeti paramatmeti 